It's now time to turn our attention over to the markets. Between harvest being in full swing and new strikes happening in the shipping ports on the East Coast, there were a lot of current events testing the markets this week. Joining us to discuss those trends is Bar Chart Senior Analyst Darren Newsom. Here's our conversation from Thursday morning. Let's begin the conversation here talking about the port strike happening on the East Coast up and down. Uh, I saw an estimate coming out for the American Farm Bureau showing $1.4 billion in an impact to ag trade every week that this continues. Of course, no uh, exact idea of how long this will continue. Give me your thoughts on why this is not having a major impact on the major commodities we talk about here on the program. Uh, to begin with, right, you know, there, there's a lot of things going on, but if we just want to look at ag right off the bat, a lot of what the U.S. ships this time of year uh, is, is soybeans, and a lot of those move off the Pacific Northwest. So, you know, where we're talking about the East Coast is mostly an import. Uh, a lot of that's what we see. What, what we see there is imports. Uh, so we've got uh, that you know, as far as goods coming into the United States. And it could, uh, you know, I have heard where it stretches all the way from the East Coast down to Texas. So this does take uh, the Gulf ports into account as well. Uh, and, you know, secondly, we just don't have a lot of soybean shipments at this time. We don't have a lot of corn. I mean, corn is shipping right now, but it's it's not the key time of year for U.S. corn exports. So I think for now there's other issues uh, as far as ag goes that are more important, most notably. Uh, it's it's harvest season and the weather looks, you know, heading into the heading into another harvest weekend. Weather looks favorable. Uh, looks like it's going to be clear for the foreseeable future. Corn seeing a bit of a nice bounce back as we uh, kind of put it in the harvest low, it looks like, looking back at the charts, Darren. you expect any more movements on the corn front in the weeks ahead? I think so. Uh, you know, one of the, from a technical point of view, what we saw was corn went into a long-term uptrend. Corn futures, I should say, went into a long-term uptrend at the end of August, and it's been slowly gaining momentum. The real question now is, will funds, will the non-commercial side actually go long the market? Fundamentally, it doesn't seem to have a reason to. So a lot of what's been going on has just been non-commercial short covering without a lot of selling on top of it. So this has allowed us to go from the, the August settlement of 401 up through the round number 410, 420, and now 430 with the, with the D24 site set on the, 4, uh, the 440 mark. We also have to remember that during October, for whatever reason, uh, we see uh, we see both uh, December November December corn and November soybeans both rally during the month. Uh, oddly enough, and coincidentally, this is also the month when the harvest price for U.S. Uh, insurance is calculated using daily closes. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on in October right now. Seems to be some some mostly technical buying, uh, fund buying. Uh, not so, not seeing the same thing in in, no, in November soybeans. So most of it's going on in corn. Most of it just funds moving to the sideline. You're teasing up my next question, which is on the soybeans. I believe you note in your comment here, you're not you're a little bit uh, seeing a bearish outlook for soybeans. Explain why that is. In, in soybeans, you know, I, I still think there's it's a good chance that they've put in their low. We don't have this clear of a technical picture on the soybean market. But but what happens this time of year in soybeans, what kind of keeps a lid on potential rallies is as har as we get deeper into harvest, U.S. producers like to sell soybeans and hold corn. So this puts more uh, available supplies into the system at a time when demand's supposed to be picking up. But now let's go back to the port. I mean, the, the port situation, if we don't have, you know, some of our export facilities ready, again, most of them still go out the Pacific Northwest. But if there's a little bit of a hiccup there, and if we're not really seeing the demand starting to materialize uh, as far as actual exports go, then it kind of is offset. So there, it, soybeans don't have the same sort of, you know, same sort of bullish factors that we could talk about in corn. And in fact, we could actually see a bit more bearish situation because of the, uh, of the supplies becoming available. And we can certainly see this in the, in the basis market as well. Darren, some of our Western Nebraska producers, well, their wheat's grown all across the state, but in particular, I hear from them. They like it when I ask you wheat questions. So size up kind of the wheat market, what you're seeing there. Wheat is interesting in that, again, there's really no fundamental reason for it to be rallying, but we're seeing strong moves uh, by all three markets, hard red winter, soft red winter, and hard red spring. Uh, and so, again, what this looks like is funds are just wanting to go to the sidelines until we see you know, what develops, either more bullish fundamentals or less bullish fundamentals, whichever the way uh, the wind seems to blow. 
But for now, they just want to move to the sidelines. There's too much uncertainty. There's too much opportunity in other market sectors. They can certainly look over, uh, you know, investment traders can certainly look over to energies, metals, even in the softs. Now, at some point, there's going to be more interest in new crop winter wheat. Uh, it's just not here yet. It probably won't be till next spring. You know, we're already into planting season and the market's basically shrugged its shoulders. We're just not seeing much activity over in the July contracts for both Kansas, for either Kansas City or Chicago. So it may not be till next spring when, when new crop moves to the forefront. And for now, you know, demand is just it's OK. It's not outstanding. And we've, we've got plenty of supplies on hand. So, again, it's not a fundamental issue. It's more of a of a fund issue, uh, as, they, as in so many other markets are just moving to the sidelines and, and uh, rolling money over to other sectors. We've covered corn, soybeans and wheat now. Darren, let's wrap up with your thoughts on where we're at here in October. What kind of last minute advice would you like to leave us with? I think it's, it's you know, there, there's going to be a great deal of uncertainty and we have we certainly have to acknowledge in early November uh, we are, you know, the U.S. has another presidential election. And we what we have to expect over this next month is a great deal of chaos from players, from global players looking to make a political change here in the United States. Uh, a lot of what we've seen overseas in Eastern Europe and Middle East and and even some of some of these situations here domestically, we could talk about the port strikes uh, are tied to the idea that political change needs to happen or one particular side wants political change to happen. So this is only going to get worse. This is why gold uh, continues to go up, even though it's at all, all time highs, it continues to find buyers. So it, and it's going to have a ripple effect. It certainly should have a ripple effect on some of the ag markets and other markets that we're interested in.